now let's break down Federer's footwork. Now Federer is definitely one of the greatest movers of all time. Now if we took away Federer's footwork and we made him have just average footwork, he wouldn't be half the player that he is. His footwork is the glue that gels his entire game together. It's what allows him to defend to actually have that chance to then attack. And there are three main steps that we can all learn from when it comes to Federer's footwork. The first one, of course, is the split step. So we know that the split step is important. We know that we should always be doing a split step when the opponent makes contact. So this step right here, but what makes Federer's split step so good is how wide he is and how explosive he is, how springy he is out of that split step. So a lot of players will do a split step, but they'll land quite heavy and it's almost as if they haven't used that ground force that they've created from that split step. When you do a split step, you want to feel like you're using the ground as almost a springboard. You're landing and you're pushing off in the direction that you need to go in. If you're landing heavy and flat-footed, you're not going to have the benefits or all the benefits from having that split step. So if you're landing on your heels, now if I want to push off to my right, I have to lift the heel off the ground, get onto the balls of my feet before I can then run off to the right side. But if I'm landing like Federer, which is explosive, but on the balls of my feet, I'm now ready to push off in any direction. So we can be more explosive with that split step. We can train our split steps, which is something that Federer does on a daily basis. And we can also land on the balls of our feet. So we're ready to push off in any direction. Ball. The next step that Federer does extremely well and uses very often is that cross over step. So this is especially good if you've hit a wide forehand or a wide backhand. You're on the run, you've hit that shot, and now to get into a good position, I can use a side shuffle step, which takes a lot of time and actually is very energy draining. It drains the energy, especially from the inner uh, leg muscles, the groin muscles. Or I can use a crossover step and this is what Federer does. So I can use a crossover step, cover much more ground with just a few steps, and also save energy, so be more energy efficient throughout the course of a match. So a crossover step would be now this right leg crossing over my left leg, as this. So mastering the crossover step will help you to recover quicker, it will help you to cover more distance with less steps, and it will help you to save energy over the course of a match. Now Federer also uses the cross behind step, and we see this very often when he's hit a wider, deeper backhand. pushed back, he's hitting a backhand, and instead of having his feet level, where he can now use a crossover step, so if he's finished his backhand, and this left leg has come across and joined the front leg almost in a line, so this and this, the crossover is easier. But often when you hit a deep backhand, you end up with your legs out of line, so your back leg will be slightly behind your front leg. So it might be like this, now for me to do a crossover step from here is very awkward, but a cross behind step is very easy. So I can hit that high back and I can finish in this position. Now I can cross behind and still have the benefits of that longer range of motion with that cross behind step. So left leg crossing over, this is a cross over step. And this is the cross behind step. With the cross behind you won't cover as much ground with one step but it's still a lot better 
than using the side shuffle step. So if I've hit a wide backhand and I finish with my feet in the line, I can use crossover. If I hit one and I finish with my foot out of line, I can use the cross behind. So if you master both of those steps and start using them, especially when you're recovering, you'll see a massive difference in how quick you can get back into a good position on the tennis court. Now this lesson is from our Pros Revolution course, which is available on our website. I'll leave the link to the full course beneath this lesson, so if you want more videos just like this one, if you want to get even deeper into Federer's game, if you want to get deeper into Nadal, Djokovic, uh, team's game, all the best pros in the world, we've analyzed their games, we've looked at what you can learn from them, what we can copy from them, and how you can now improve your own game by copying your favorite player. So click on the link below this video for more information about the full course. Thank you so much for watching the video guys, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've learned something new. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you click on that like button, subscribe to the channel of course, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. If there are any lessons you'd like to see in the near future, leave a comment below this one and we'll try and make the most popular suggestions. Signing off, Simon from TTT, all the best and see you soon guys. Take care.